Good evening. My name is Dr. Jana Suter, and I'm the coordinator for instructional technology and assessment here in the Caneo Valley Unified School District. Tonight, we're going to talk about Canvas. Specifically, we're going to focus on Canvas for parents of 6th through 12th grade students. So the big things that we're going to cover tonight are, we're going to show you where to log in, where your students will log in, how they navigate, and we are going to provide info on how you as a parent can choose to create a Canvas account so that you can monitor your students' assignments. Okay. So I am going to share my screen with you and we're going to walk through it. Now, this evening, I, we do have a slide deck that we're using and it is available at this bit.ly link. However, this slide deck is largely for Canvas terminology as well as to provide you access to the login links that you will use as parents. These login links will also be available on the district website. So the majority of these slides are terminology that you can choose to look at. And here on the last page is our Canvas login page for parents, the Canvas login page for students, as well as how to create what's called a pairing code. As a parent, if you choose to create a Canvas account, you will need to create a pairing code in order to access your students' information. Now, we're going to start with the login page for students. So when students go to my.classlink.com slash Conejo USD, they get a login screen that says sign in to Classlink. Classlink is actually not Canvas, but it is a new system that we have as a district began using this year. Classlink is a dashboard where we can provide single sign-on and password saving for all of our students amidst all of our different systems. The goal of CVUSD implementing Classlink is so that students no longer have to remember 10 to 12 different passwords for the different systems that we use. In order to sign into Classlink, students will use their six digit student ID number and their Google password. If, if your child doesn't know what their Google password is or doesn't remember what their Google password is, that's okay. All families will be receiving an email via from via Blackboard from CVUSD that will include your specific students login information. So when I put this, when I put in my student ID and my password, I'm going to click sign in and I'm going to get a dashboard of apps. Now, if you have multiple students in CVUSD, your different students may have different dashboards. For example, apps that are specific to an elementary school will show up on an elementary school's student's dashboard. For any middle and high school students, the same applies. Middle school students may show different apps than high school students. To log into Canvas, students are going to come to this dashboard and click on CVUSD Canvas. When they do that, it is going to log in to the Canvas dashboard. Students are by default going to see all of the classes that they are enrolled in. In this case, this particular student is only logged into one course right now. So they only see their geometry course. If your child is currently enrolled in three courses, your child will see three course cards here. Likewise, if they're enrolled in six courses, your child will see six course cards. On the right-hand side is the Canvas to-do list 
for students. Any assignments and any Zoom meetings that your teacher schedules with your students will show up in this to-do list. As students finish things, they can choose to click on it to close it. Okay. That doesn't mean that it deletes. What it means is, is it only removes it from the to-do list. Everywhere else in Canvas where students will see what things they need to accomplish on a given day will still stay in those other places. So what is one of those other places? On the left hand side, students have a calendar. This calendar populates with all of a student's assignments for that day. There are multiple different views a student can access depending on which view they prefer. There's a week view, a month view, and there's also an agenda view. If you're a family who likes to print off calendars and have paper copies, you will want to print the agenda view. It print, it's the nice, nicest formatting. Students can also add ma manual events to their Canvas calendar should they choose to. They will do that by clicking on this plus sign to create a new event. They can give it a title, a date, and a time. And if they want more options, they can click on more options. But this will cover the basics for that. Also on the left hand side is an inbox. This inbox is a sort of internal email system. Okay. This inbox is linked to each student's Google Learn account. So when teachers send students an email via this inbox, students will receive an email at their Google Learn accounts. If there is something the student needs to respond to, the student can do it either from this Canvas inbox by clicking on it and using the reply button, or the student can reply directly from their Google Learn Gmail interface. Both options will get will send a reply to their teacher. Likewise, students can compose a new message directly in Canvas to email their teachers. Their teachers will receive an email at their district email address and be able to reply. Below that is a help button. The help button allows for students to access some Canvas guides. There's a link here if they need to send an email to their instructor or their teachers. They can report problems they're having with Canvas. And so this can be a very valuable resource for students should they choose to use it. Let's go back to our dashboard and take a look at what our classes look like. So again, on the Canvas dashboard is where students can access the various classes they are enrolled in. This particular student is enrolled in one course, Geometry. When I click on the course card, what I'm going to see is I'm going to see my teacher's homepage where I might have a meet the teacher button that explains a little bit about their teacher. There might be a contact me button to help facilitate students contacting their teachers directly. There may be a syllabus button where students can access the syllabus directly. They may have a Zoom or live lessons button. 
that button will take them directly to their live instruction. Okay. They're likely to have a button that either says weekly work or modules. Our secondary teachers are setting up their work in what are called modules. Modules are folders. So this modules allow the teacher to put work in a linear fashion for student access. And as you'll notice, there is some indenting going on to help with understanding so that there is an outline format. Okay. When students come to see their work for the day, the week, or the unit, they'll be able to click on the first slide and be able to access information. Information that might be here could include a PowerPoint for students to click through and get information. It can include embedded videos like YouTube videos or videos that teachers have created. For students to go to the next one, they will click next. When they come to an assignment that they need to submit, they will see a blue submit assignment button. In this case, this, is, this assignment is for students to upload a copy of their math work. So for example, a geometry teacher assigns our student a page in their textbook to complete and students complete that work on paper. What they can do here is they can upload a photo of that assignment and submit it to their teacher for feedback. Any students who have access to a mobile device or an iPad, completing work uploads in this fashion are a bit simplified because there is a Canvas mobile student app. So if students have access to that and their teachers are asking them to complete file uploads in the format of photos, I would highly suggest that students download that free app. Now, here on the left, students will see a navigation bar. This will take them to the various places in this course that are applicable to them. So they're going to have a home, pay, a home link. They may have an announcements link where the teacher can push out announcements to either the entire class or to just one cohort of students. Okay. They may have a discussion link. Discussion boards, similar to online discussion boards, but these are completely private to the one class. Students may be completing those as part of their day to day assignments. Not all teachers are using discussion boards. But for any teachers who are, you will see a link here. Students may see a link to grades. This allows them to access their assignments. Okay. What you'll see here is that on this page automatically it comes up geometry. If my child is enrolled in multiple courses, they will be able to change which course they're looking at automatically from this page. They don't have to go into another course to see their grades. Down below, they'll see what assignments they have. They'll see due dates associated with those assignments what their score was, and what these assignments were out of. They'll be able to click on them to go directly to the assignment. If they want to print a copy of their grades, they will have a button to do that here. Also on the left-hand side, students are going to see a link for Zoom. This will allow them to access the Zoom meetings that are scheduled with their class. 
any meetings that have been scheduled with students will show up here with a start time, a topic, and a meeting ID. They will have a join button next to each of these meetings. Okay. Once a class meeting has taken place, students will be able to, they will move from this upcoming meetings tab to the previous meetings tab. All right. Now, in order for parents to make a Canvas account, should they choose to, you will need and what's called a pairing code. So for your first student, the easiest way is for your student to log into their account and click on settings. Here in settings, on the right hand side, there will be a silver pair with observer button. When a student clicks on that button, it creates a one time use code for parents to use to create their Canvas account. Once this code is used, it is no longer valid. So if there's multiple parents who wish to create Canvas accounts, the student will need to generate a pairing code. The first parent uses that pairing code and then you'll need to generate a second one. When parents wish to create their accounts, what they will do is they will come to conejousd.instructure.com slash login slash canvas. This link will be available on the district website and it is also included in the slide deck mentioned at the beginning. So once a parent has their first pairing code, you will come to this page and at the top, click on parent of a Canvas user, click here for an account. Where as a parent, you will enter your name, your email address, your password. You'll need to re-enter that password and then you'll need to enter the student pairing code. Okay. At the bottom, once you've entered that information, you will click on start participating. That will log you in and show you the course cards associated with your student. Okay. You'll notice that the student that I paired with only was enrolled in one course, but I'm seeing four courses here. That's because you can pair your one Canvas account with multiple students. So for example, if you have a student at Redwood Middle School, as well as a student at Thousand Oaks High School, you'll create your account using a pairing code from your first student. Then what you can do is you can come into the account section, click on settings, okay. or actually the quicker way is we'll click on observing. It will show you which student or students are linked to your parent account. Up here in this text box is where you can enter additional pairing codes if you have multiple students. So again, you'll, your student's account can generate a pairing code. Okay. You'll enter it here and click on plus student. Once you have multiple students, you will see multiple student course cards. Okay. You'll notice that the system here is a little bit different for you. Instead of saying a to-do list like it had for students, you'll see a coming up list. And this shows which things are coming up within the next day or two. Okay. 
You'll have a button on your dashboard to view grades where you can view grades of your student. And on the left hand side, you will also have options for a calendar and an inbox. The calendar will show you the calendars for all of the students your account is paired with. So again, if you have a child at Redwood Middle School, as well as one at Thousand Oaks High School, you will be able to see all of their tasks on this calendar. And once again, should you choose to print this calendar out, the best printable view is the agenda view of the calendar. Okay. From here, you can also use the inbox to communicate directly with your child's teacher. Okay. And again, this will go directly to each teacher's work email address. Okay. You can continue to communicate directly with teachers via, via their email address and bypass this inbox should you choose to. Okay. Now, the last thing as a parent you are likely to want to do is to adjust the notifications you receive from Canvas. In your account area, you can click on notifications. The notifications give you a choice of whether you want to be notified right away of something, whether you want to get a daily summary, a weekly summary, or not receive anything. You can also choose whether to check the box to show you the name of observed students in notifications. This is particularly helpful if you have multiple students. Now, under course activities, these are the default notifications and settings. You can choose to either receive more or to receive fewer. That is completely up to you. Okay. Now, one of the questions that we have received is, if I have multiple students and I really want to receive notifications for one student, but not necessarily the other one, how can I adjust that? Okay. From your dashboard, when you can observe these various classes with your students, you have notification settings that are specific to each class as well. Okay. How I do that is, is I click on the class and I have options to view course notifications. This will show me notifications that have already been sent out. Okay. So that is the it. For, that is the end for this evening. We will stick around and answer some additional Q and A. Thank you very much for joining us, and have a nice and have a nice night.